are continuing our journey through spiritual disciplines. And remember, each discipline that we have been studying is for our spiritual growth, that we would have the end goal of becoming more and more like Jesus Christ. And today, our spiritual discipline that we're going to focus on is evangelism. But first, what is evangelism? Evangelism is simply telling non-Christians about the good news of Jesus Christ to save sinners. And we are urging people to confess, to repent, to believe, um, and to commit their lives to following Jesus Christ. Uh, but why do we see evangelism as a spiritual discipline? And I love this quote by Donald Whitney. He says this, Unless we discipline ourselves for evangelism, it is very easy to excuse ourselves from ever sharing the gospel with anyone. And I admit there has been times even in my own life where I've been afraid to share the gospel with someone or I had uh, insecurity or insufficient knowledge that uh, allowed me to that made my heart hesitant and even sharing to begin with. So if we do not see evangelism as a spiritual discipline, just like Whitney said, a lot of times many Christians will be silent when it comes to the opportunity of sharing about the good news of Jesus Christ. And that's why we want to focus on how do we see uh, evangelism as a spiritual discipline for our spiritual growth and to become more and more like Jesus Christ. And so there's three truths that I want to share with you about evangelism. And the first truth is this, is that evangelism is expected. When we look in the Gospels, we see Jesus giving his commands um, to the disciples to share good news. In Matthew 4, 19, Jesus says, Follow me, and I will make you fishers of men. In John 20, 21, he says, As the Father has sent me, even so I am sending you. And then most famously, Jesus gives the Great Commission in Matthew 28. He says, Go and make disciples, baptizing them and teaching them in all that I have taught you. And the Bible continues this imagery for evangelism that Christians are to be witnesses in Acts 1.8. Christians are to be ministers of reconciliation and, and ambassadors for Christ in 1 Corinthians 5.17-21. through 21. And so we are called and expected to share the gospel boldly. Um, in our neighborhood and in our nation, we evangelize with our lives and our lips. And so evangelism is expected. The second truth is, is evangelism happens in our everyday context. I love this quote by Tim Chester, pastor. He says, our lifestyle of evangelism is ordinary people doing ordinary things with gospel intentionality. What this means is that on an everyday basis, in our everyday context, we should have an intentional mind and a plan to build relationships with people in order that we might have the opportunity to share the good news of Christ. So what are practical ways that we can live with gospel intentionality? I want you to think of people who are in your context right now that are not believers, whether it's your family or whether it's close friends. Take a specific day and write a specific time to text or call them to have a conversation with them. You can simply ask, how are they doing through this coronavirus season? How, how are, what are ways that you can be praying for them? And get to know them a little bit more and, and ask them further questions of what are some things that they're passionate about? What are some things that are painful in their life? And as you're listening to them, you can then look for opportunities to share your story and the hope that you have in Jesus Christ. And even on, uh, even in this season, a lot of us have different platforms, whether it's social media or whether it's gaming or whether it's online school. Those are opportunities that you can share um, your story of how Jesus saved your life. Um, you can share uh, specific verses that have encouraged your heart in, in, in reading them. You can also invite people to uh, join our church online on Wednesday nights and Sunday morning to worship together. Uh, create a watch party on Facebook or um, Instagram. Um, you can also even invite people to our Thursday night live at 630 and then ask them the question, what did you think and would you come back and do you have any questions? These are practical ways that you can be intentional with sharing the gospel. And the third truth that I want you to know is evangelism is empowered. 
And this should be the sweetest news for all of us, that Jesus doesn't call us to something without empowering us to do it. And we see this in Matthew 28, that Jesus says, All authority in heaven and earth has been given to me. And he also promises his disciples that I will be with you to the end of the age when he's sending out his disciples with a great commission. And in Jesus, John 20, 21, he first, Jesus first says, Peace I give to you. And then he sends them out. And then in uh, Acts 1, 8, he reminds the disciples that you will receive power from on high to be my witnesses to the ends of the earth. So guys, do not forget that evangelism is empowered. And I want to leave you with last few applications for us to feel comfortable and confident about sharing the gospel. The first application is we need to um, preach the gospel to ourselves every day. For us to have confidence in those unplanned moments or even planned moments in sharing the gospel, we need to know the gospel ourselves. So whether you learn the three circles method or you learn uh, the story of creation, fall, redemption, restoration, make sure that you know the gospel yourself so that you would be ready and prepared to share it when someone asks you. Um, the second uh, application is to pray and ask God to give you help in times of sharing the gospel. And I learned this prayer of evangelism in seminary. I want to share it with you. Uh, pray that God would give you an opportunity to share your faith. Pray that God would give you wisdom to see that opportunity. And then pray that God would give you the courage to take those opportunities. And the last application is to trust and rest in the power of God to save those who are perishing. You have to remember, guys, our job is not to save people. Our job is to share and be faithful to share the gospel. I love how Bill Bright, who was a founder of Crusade, he says, Success in witnessing is simply taking the initiative to share Christ in the power of the Holy Spirit and leaving the results to God. And that's exactly what we do. We leave the results to God and we uh, are faithful in sharing the gospel so that more people would come and God would draw people to himself. <music>